What's up everybody, Kyle here at Let's Talk Wax with Prospect Hot Sheet episode number seven. This is a bi-weekly series that I do that covers the prospects that are the hottest offensively from the last 15 days. Now before we jump into this video and get into our 15 through 11 rankees, I'm gonna explain my two ranking systems so there's no confusion throughout this video. In the data tables below, you're going to see a jug ranking and you're also going to see a let's talk wax rank. So we're gonna explain the juggernaut ranking system first. This is a stats-based ranking system I created uh, last year that is based on weighted on base average, stolen bases per plate appearance, K percentage, swing strike percentage, WRC plus, and age level. This does not really take my subjective opinion into account, but they are cherry pick stats that I like. So there is some subjectiveness in there, but it is based solely on stats and uh, they are cumulative throughout the entire year. So as we approach the end of the season, uh, the guys that are in the top 100 are probably going to stay pretty close to that top 100 for the remainder of the year. You're also going to see an LTWR ranking system. That's called my Let's Talk Wax ranking system. And this is my uh, own personal opinion how I rank prospects based on a multitude of factors. Uh, the Juggernaut system does not include defensive upside, but I do incorporate that into my Let's Talk Wax ranking system. And it's based on a player ceiling where I think they could end up uh, at the major league level. You can see it goes from elite to seven, with elite being a future possible MLB MVP, and number seven being an upper level minor league player. With that out of the way, we're going to jump into our first 15 in our top 15. Now the complex league has ended and there will be no complex league guys on here. Some players uh, that had significantly good seasons in the complex league were promoted to low A. I can think of Robert Calais and I can think of Welbin Francisca as two of those names, but complex league play has come to an end and I think the only DSL standout is on this top 15. So we won't see any honorable mentions for uh, the DSL and Complex League. Now I do have honorable mentions, a top five for each league, and I'll get to those uh, later in the video, but we're gonna start with our top 15, Andrew Pinckney. He's 23.7 Washington Nationals. He's a left fielder playing in double A right now. He's got a solid hit tool and speed, but he's got some limited power and rough K numbers, and his age level uh, is kind of uh, getting him to be forgotten in the hobby when prospects get close to the age of 24, even uh, 23 sometimes. I think the hobby kind of pretty much gives up on them as future stars. I can think of a guy named Adrian Del Castillo who's had some success at the major league level who actually aged out of content. But it does happen sometimes where older players do find some success at the major league level. But with the volume of the checklist nowadays, I cut off my content at 24 years old. You're actually gonna see one 24 year old on here because one of the leagues just had nothing to work with. It was a pretty stagnant uh, last 15 days in one of the leagues. But without further ado on that, we got Andrew Pinckney. Uh, this looks like a definite hot streak for Pinckney. When you're prospecting, you need to consider the fact that there are season stats, there are career stats, and there are hot streaks. Guys who consistently perform throughout their career and throughout the course of an entire season are usually pretty safe floor guys to uh, collect. But when you get guys like Pinckney that are on the the high end of a hot streak here. You can see most of his numbers are in blue, but he did have a home run, a triple, seven doubles and four RBIs over the last 15. He's a $5 auto out of 2023 draft with a juggernaut ranking of 461 and a Let's Talk Wax rank of five. At number 14, we've got Alan Castro. He was actually on the hot sheet last week. I wanna say he was, I'm gonna check back right here quick and take a look. He was number one on uh, hot sheet number six. So he's continuing to play well at the high A level. We could see maybe a promotion to double A for Alan Castro. He's 21.3 Boston Red Sox outfielder in high A right now. Had three homers, a triple, four doubles, and 10 RBIs. Now he looks like he's a bit more power over hit right now with a 212 ISO and a 252 batting average. He's got pretty solid K numbers, 14 home runs and 10 stolen bases on the year, and he's actually pretty close to being age appropriate for high A, a uh, little a little old. I would like to see guys in high A around 19 and 20, but 21.3 just having turned 21 isn't terrible, but it's also not great. He's 159 on the juggernaut ranking system, a Let's Talk Wax rank of 3.5. He is out of the fresh released 2024 Bowman for about $5. At number 13, we have our DSL guy, Arnaldo Lantigia, 18.6 Los Angeles Dodgers outfielder. And before we get into our DSL guy, I try to mention this on every video. 
and especially with 2024 Bowman Chrome on the horizon, uh, DSL stats are pretty much like high school baseball stats, if not <laughs> worse. There's a lot of uh, very young players. Uh, if, you, if you ever go through uh, the stats from the DSL only, you're going to see probably 60 to 70 players with OPSs over 1.00. So it is a very offensively inflated uh, league to play in. So always be aware of that. And almost 90% of the time, players that have a lot of success in the DSL come stateside and really struggle in low A. So with, like I said, with 2024 Chrome being an international prospect loaded checklist and um, having a guy on here in the DSL, I always advise you guys to consider DSL stats as is kind of just take them with a grain of salt. But uh, we did have a, like Robert Calais was another guy that um, played really well in the DSL. It does happen once in a while, but uh, more than not, the players are going to do really well in the DSL, then they're going to find some struggles when they come stateside to, to low A and even the complex league sometimes. But Lantigi had three home runs, five doubles, 14 RBIs, and nine walks. Always like guys in the DSL that take walks. He had a 296 ISO this uh, last 15 days, or sorry, over, over his uh, DSL career. And like you said, you're going to see the inflated stats here. A 296 ISO in 2024, a 288 batting average, 1.17 K to walk ratio, the best on this list, which is exciting. 10 home runs and five stolen bases. So, uh, even the players that uh, do perform well, one thing to look for in the DSL are really immaculate K numbers. If they have really, really good K numbers, they could be a safer bet than some of the players who have fringy K numbers in the DSL. He did not qualify for my juggernaut ranking system because he only had, I think, I think he had under 200 plate appearances. And as the season move on, moves on, I increase the amount of plate appearances to qualify for that. He's a Let's Talk Wax rank 4 out of 2023 Bowman Chrome. He does not have a Bowman Chrome auto. So you're going to have to go with first chromes only, and they're only about a dollar right now. So I would definitely look for some parallels if he's a guy you want to collect. Uh, he's shown power, but um, nothing is certain, like I said, until low A. So keep that in mind with Lantigia and all DSL guys. At number 12, we've got Jorge Ruiz, 20.2 Los Angeles Angels outfielder. He has played between high A and low A. Over the last 15 days, he's hit 381 with two homers, a triple, two doubles, and six RBIs. Now, Jorge Ruiz is not having a very good season. He's got some of the worst numbers on this list throughout the 2024 season, a 202 batting average and a 081 ISO. So not a lot of power to speak of. I think his best tool right now is going to be speed. And that's not even uh, that's not even elite at uh, low A level where stolen bases are a little inflated. So it looks like a hot streak for Jorge Ruiz. If you've been sitting on any of him, maybe a good time to try to pump some sales if he's going to get really hot in the back half. I guess it's actually the back third now of the season. We're way past the back half. He's almost down to 1,000 on my juggernaut rankings. He's a Let's Talk Wax rank of four out of 2023 Bowman for about $5. At number uh, 11, we've got Trey Faltini. Uh, this looks like another hot streak all the way. He's got some pretty bad underlying numbers. He's got a 37.2K percentage on the season, uh, and he's 23.6 playing in low A. So another guy you definitely might want to take a look at uh, throwing on eBay if you've got a significant amount of him laying around or if somehow you've accumulated a lot of Faltini uh, in breaks chasing uh, different players out of 2023 Chrome. But... Uh, did hit three home runs, three doubles, 10 RBIs, and eight stolen bases. He is below the $1,000 or the 1,000 uh, rank in Juggernaut. He's 1,005. So uh, he is way down there. He's probably, I would say that's in the 85th percentile. So not a very good number, or sorry, probably like the 10th percentile. <laughs> I went backwards there. Let's talk wax rank of six, which tells me he's probably going to fizzle out somewhere in double A, triple A, maybe if he gets that far. He is out of 2023 Chrome. And of course, with those numbers, he's going to be about a $5 auto. Now, if you guys enjoy my content and you want to help support the channel, I do have a Patreon page. You can find a link to it in the video description. I've got a ton of exclusive content over there. Lots of data for you guys to look over to kind of help you on your prospecting journey. You're not going to find a lot of information on exactly who to buy and sell. I try not to give that information out because uh, it can have some devastating <laughs> consequences but there's tons of data to kind of help you guys stay organized and on top of the Bowman Chrome scene. 
I've got autograph checklist breakdowns for every release since 2019. I just recently updated my 2024 Bowman and 2024 Bowman draft. It's got all the players on the checklist with a little write-up, but let's talk wax rank. Um, it's got their career stats and uh, their comps. So that's a great data tool for you guys to check out to stay organized. I've got team break guides for every release since 2020 as well. So you can see uh, what players come with each team out of every release. If you're doing a big mixer break, or you want to see, you know, what breaks you could or what teams you could find for a budget with some good players, and they also uh, have let's talk wax ranks for each player within the team. There, the juggernaut rankings, of course, are fully accessible over on my Patreon page. Uh, they are sorted by player and by rank. I do do a video every two weeks on the uh, top 15. But you can unlock all the juggernaut rankings one through. I think there's about uh, 1,200 prospects right now in those ranks. And like I said, they're sorted by rank and by player. So if you have a player you're collecting and you want to see where they pan out on the juggernaut system, you can do that over there as well. I've got a top 100 Bowman Chrome Autos under $50 list that I updated about a month ago. I update my top 100 Bowman Chrome Autos list once every year at the end of the season so we can kind of prepare for uh, going forward into the next season and see who we think could have a successful year in the following season so it'll be kind of geared more towards the 2025 season we've got a private discord server that's run by my man bobby who does a great job over there it's got daily prospect news information on promotion and call-ups uh, hobby discussion there's help with grading there's a buy sell trade and you can advertise uh, personally over there if you have breaks or maybe a whatnot account that you want to check out but lots of cool stuff over there if you guys want to check it out it's in the uh, page or it's in the uh, video description my patreon page and it helps the channel i appreciate everybody who supports me over there already and that's going to bring us to our top 10. We're going to lead it off with Matt Shaw, who's having a pretty good back half of the year. He struggled a little bit in the front half of 2024. He had the immaculate 2023 post-draft. I really like this guy. He's the highest rankee actually in the top 15 at 1.5 for Let's Talk Wax Rank. I do think he's got a pretty high ceiling as a speed power prospect. I do believe he's, not, he's going to move away from shortstop. He's playing in the majority of his reps right now at second base and uh, he does get some reps at third base and shortstop well but I think he's going to end up being a second baseman that has some speed and power he's 22.7 played in double a the uh, the entire year he hit 409 over the last 15 days with three homers a couple extra base hits and five stolen bases you can see his k numbers are both in red and anything in red is really good if it's in red and bold it's the best on this list if it's in black and bold it's also the best on this list Anything in blue is not good, and anything in blue bold is the worst on this list. So those colors are kind of explained there. I do have the little cheat sheet here in the bottom of the graph, but it's kind of hard to read sometimes if you're on a cell phone. But a big year for Shaw, 14 home runs, 25 stolen bases. He's number 29, the highest ranking uh, prospect via MLB.com in my top 15. On the juggernaut, it's a pretty parallel ranking at number 37. He's out of 2023 draft, and his cards are starting to get a little bit expensive, you know, with rosters expanding at the end of the uh, end of, near the end of the season in September. He could be a guy that maybe does get some time at the major league level, so his cards are jumping up a little bit, up to $85. He was recently promoted to Triple A, and like I said, I think he could be a guy that maybe sees some big league time at the end of this season. At number nine, we've got Cam Collier, 19.7 Cincinnati Reds third baseman. He is in high A right now. He's made some significant improvements since 2023 while advancing levels. He's definitely a power over hit type of player. Uh, the hit tool, he's had a 245 batting average this season with a 179 ISO. He's got 15 home runs, so like I said, there is some power there. It's just a matter of how much he'll get to at the upper levels of the minor leagues based off of his kind of fringy K numbers. He's got a 26.3K percentage and a 2.53K to walk ratio. So there is some hit tool risk there with Cam Collier, but there is also some power and those are guys that the hobby does tend to favor uh, in the current state of where it's at right now. He's a top 100 prospect on MLB.com at 82. He's 156 on my juggernaut rankings. He's the number three. Let's talk wax rank. And his cards are right around $50 right now out of 2023 Bowman. At number eight, we've got Max Muncy. And he's a guy that I've kind of liked. Uh, he's kind of had it's like a roller coaster 
of a career. Um, he has his ups and downs, but he's riding a very solid back half of the season right now, 21.9 shortstop. Now with Jacob Wilson uh, kind of ahead of him as far as the hit tool goes and defensively, I do think he could make a move to maybe second base or third base. But in the Oakland A's organization, if you hit, there's always going to be a place to play because they are not very well renowned for their um for their current major league status. So four home runs, hit 306 over the last 15 with a double 12 RBIs. On this season so far, he's hitting 290 with a 241 ISO. Some pretty big production numbers right there. Now, he's another guy kind of like Collier with some K uh, number tendencies. He's got 26.8 K percentage, a high K rates kind of always followed him around uh, his career. He's got a 2.91 K to walk ratio. So definitely some fringy numbers there. But unlike Collier, they are at the highest level of uh, minor league baseball, AAA. So I'd rather see them uh, be fringy at that level than be fringy in the lower minors where they could definitely inflate in the upper minors. He's number 99 on the Juggernaut ranking system. He's a, a Let's Talk Wax rank of 2.5 out of 2022 Bowman. His cards are jumped kind of... Uh, jumped up a little bit to $25 over the last couple of months. Number seven, we've got Edgar Quiero, and I think I've said this before on several of my videos, I do think he's probably one of the most undervalued players in the hobby, but his cards are starting to increase in value. He was once upon a time a $5 auto when I started to really get into Edgar Quiero. He's always had an advanced hit tool. He did uh, struggle with some power last year, but the power's there in low A. I think he hit like 15 home runs, and he's up to 16 home runs this year on the season in AAA. So the power is starting to come back, and I think that may be what's driving his prices back up. People always want to see that power number in the red. So I definitely uh, forgot to put his ISO in red. He's a 199 ISO, which is just short of 200. 17.2 uh, K percentage at 1.72 K to walk ratio. So really good K numbers, really good contact bat. It's a hit power bat. The only problem with Edgar Quiro is he plays in the White Sox organization who is probably the worst organization in baseball right now. Sorry to all the White Sox fans, but uh, that does definitely impact his value. He's a top uh, 100 prospect on LB.com at number 71. He is number 20 on my juggernaut ranking system, the highest juggernaut ranking on this list. He's a Let's Talk Wax rank of two. Now 2022 building, like I said, for 25 bucks. At number six, we've got Arjun Namala, 18.8 Toronto Blue Jays. He is a shortstop prospect played between the Complex League and low A. He's got a very high ceiling bat, but he's really struggling with the Ks in 2024. You can see he's got a 31.2% K rate in the lower minors. He is 18, but that is some significant swing and miss there. A 219 batting average, but big power production, 259 ISO with 13 home runs and five stolen bases as an 18-year-old. So his uh, his risk is just as high as his ceiling. Um, his cards have kind of jumped back up to about $50. He's number 290 on the Juggernaut rank system, and let's talk wax rank of 3.5 out of 2024 Bowman. And before we get into our top five, we're going to take a look at all the honorable mentions from each league. I do a top five from each league. So if you don't see one of your favorite players on here, they just barely missed the cut because I only do five per league. Out of AAA, we've got Chase Midruth, 23.1 Boston Red Sox, had a pretty significant last two weeks. He's a pretty high floor guy and he could be uh, play an infield utility, maybe platoon role. I don't see him being an impact bat at the major league level, which doesn't have enough power, but he definitely has a pretty significant hit tool that could allow him to, you know, platoon around the infield. At number two, we've got Kobe Mayo. He was promoted to the major leagues on August 2nd. He is currently, as this video was recorded, 0 for 13 with 8K. So not a hot start for Kobe Mayo at the major league level, but his bat's been so consistent throughout his minor league career. I do think that he will he will figure it out. It's just going to take some time. And as I mentioned in my last video, a lot of guy, a lot of, a lot of, uh, Collectors aren't willing to wait out uh, players' development at the major league level. They're very quickly to bag on players who struggle. So we may see a dip in some of his prices in the offseason if he continues to struggle at the major league level. And number three, we've got Jordan Walker. And this is a player I didn't think I would ever see on a 2024 minor league hot sheet. Uh, he was demoted to the minors 
to AAA earlier this year, 22.2 St. Louis Cardinals third base slash outfield, hit three home runs, four doubles, and five RBIs. His cards are down to $125 out of 2020 Bowman draft. That is a mistake on the card. It should be 2020 Bowman draft, not 2022. But they are also SP'd. So if you are ripping uh, 2020 Bowman draft, his card are not SP'd. They are redemptions, and the redemptions have expired for Jordan Walker. So you're not going to get... Uh, those redemptions for Jordan Walker for the base autos. I think his color autos are live in the product, but don't go into uh, into a 2020 draft thinking to, you're gonna uh, you're gonna pull a Jordan Walker base because, like I said, the redemptions are expired. At number four, we got Tyler Locklear, 23.8 Seattle Mariners. He is a first baseman. He was optioned to AAA as well on July 30th. He had a 156 batting average, a 40.8% K rate, and a small sample size at the major league level. So another guy who didn't figure it out over a quick stint at the major leagues level. Uh, Jordan Beck is number 5, 23.2 Colorado. He also struggled in his first pro debut. Hit, uh, he's hitting 324 with a 257 ISO in AAA right now, though. So I would expect to see him back at the major league level, possibly you know, when the rosters expand, like I said, in, in September. And also maybe in 2025 if he has a good spring. Luis Matos is ice cold. He hit 217 with a 116 ISO in the major leagues prior to his demotion. He's kind of struggling right now uh, in Triple A. Going to bring us to the Eastern League where we got Alex De Jesus. He's a solid hit tool guy, but fringy K numbers, and he's got limited power and speed, so he's pretty much a contact only guy. He's out of 2023 Chrome with a one dollar auto. Roman Anthony is an absolute stud, and I kind of I could have put him in the top 15. But um, I tried to get some other guys up there this week. He, uh, I definitely think he could be a top five prospect in the, in 2025. He's just he's just so good. Five tool player. Um, not a whole lot to say here. 20.2 playing in Double A, a 1.074 OPS over the last 15 days. So Roman Anthony continues to be very good when he's healthy. And as I mentioned before, I definitely think he's going to make a huge jump up the prospect ladder in 2025 when we see some more guys graduate from that list. Samuel Baseo, 19.9, Baltimore Orioles catcher slash first base. We talk about Baseo a lot on the channel. He's a huge bat with limited defensive upside, and he's turning 20 in a few days, so he won't be 19.9 anymore. But another big bat to look out for in 2025. Adiel Amador is coming off the worst season of his career, but he's kind of heating up. Uh, Hartford's a really tough place to play in the AA Colorado Rockies system. A lot of prospects struggle at that level, but he's starting to make a comeback. I think his cards are down to the lowest they've ever been at $15 out of 2021 Bowman. Spencer Jones hit two home runs, five doubles, and nine RBIs, but he's definitely holding a 36% K rate. He's another guy that ceiling is as high as his risk with his hit tool. So being a New York Yankee, though, people are going to pay premiums for Spencer Jones. His cards are still around $150, regardless of uh, his K rate being near 40. Uh, ice cold is Ryan Clifford, who also rides a lot of waves. He's got some huge power. Another guy whose power ceiling um, is just as much of a risk as his hit tool. So be aware of Clifford monstrous power but uh, there is some swing and miss that goes along with him as well in the southern league we've got mike Beebe leading it off 22.3 third base slash first base prospect for the milwaukee brewers had a 1.426 ops and three home runs he would have made the top 15 but he only had a 20 at bat uh, sample size for the last 15 days um, he's got a, also a little minor power surge for a guy who's more of a contact bat i kind of put him in line with a player like uh, jacob wilson kind of a similar offensive profile there jared cerna was ice cold he was on the ice cold list last week but he was traded to miami and uh he's been on fire since the trade he's got a 270 batting average with 13 home runs so definitely a guy to look at i know a lot of his value dropped there were several guys in our discord who were pretty high on cerna and had some nice collections and once he got traded from the yankees to the marlins they were like oh my goodness you know what's going to happen to his value he's not a yankee anymore so Definitely something to consider when you invest in Yankee prospects is if they get moved, their value could drop a little bit. Joe Mack continues to have the best season of his career. He's got 19 home runs between high A and double A. Chandler Simpson leads the minor leagues in stolen bases again for the second consecutive year with an elite contact tool. This guy is going to be an exciting player if he can maybe get up to the Tampa Bay Rays major league system or maybe he could be a trade piece. 
and fit a little better in an organization that doesn't have such high profile prospects. At number five, we've got Carlos Rodriguez, who was really recently promoted to AAA. He's definitely a contact over power bat, a career 294 batting average, but no juice while he did hit two home runs over the last 15. He's a $5 auto out of 2021 Chrome. Braden Taylor has been struggling a bit since his promotion to double A. He had a really good season in high A, 14 home runs and 26 stolen bases, a very good power uh, speed threat from Braden Taylor. But like I said, he's struggling in double A. Not to be uh, concerned though, this does happen with a lot of prospects coming out of high A. It does take them some time. The jump from high A to double A is very significant. So I would expect him to kind of pick it back up. He may, he may uh, just continue to struggle until the end of the year. His prices may fall a little bit, but he'll probably spend the full season in double A in 2025, where he's going to have his feet wet and have some experience. So definitely a guy to watch in the Tampa Bay Rays system. There was not a whole lot of action in the Texas League. And like I said, I did put a 24-year-old on this list, Damon Keith. I think he's on the chopping block or age. Uh, he aged out of the content that I do for my autograph checklist breakdowns. Uh, he's out of 2023 Bowman. He's a $5 auto. He's got uh, quite a bit of power. He hit 283 with two home runs, but um, he's got some really rough career K numbers. They have improved in 2024, but he's got a lot of swing and miss tendencies. Jimmy Crooks uh, was a sleeper with a solid hit tool and fringy power. He's got a 282 career batting average in the minor leagues, but I do think the bat is a little more hit over power, maybe a lot more hit over power, and always going to have impact power at the major league level. We just covered Bryce Matthews in our juggernaut rankings. He has a lot of tools, but he also has a lot of hit tool risk. He's kind of a more raw player, but the Houston Astros are pretty good at developing players like that. I know Pena was kind of raw coming into uh, his years in the minor leagues, and he panned out pretty well. Also, another thing to think about with uh, Bryce Matthews playing shortstop and uh, that infield just being absolutely crowded with Altuve, Bregman, and uh, Pena. Nowhere really for him to go unless he maybe makes a move to the outfield. Or, um, you know, maybe he gets involved in a trade where he could move to and play shortstop at a different organization who's not have does not have so many prominent major league players. But definitely got to watch. He's pretty cheap uh, for a first rounder with some tools. He's a, 20, he's a $30 auto out of 2024 Bowman. Uh, Abimelech Ortiz struggling, uh, hit two home runs, but he's batting 201 on the year with a sub 150 ISO. Leading off high A in the South Atlantic League is Antonio Gomez. He's a career 250 hitter with limited power, so that's going to make him a $5 auto right off the bat out of 2021 Chrome. Brock Jones has a high speed power ceiling, but he does struggle with contact in K's. He's a bit old for high A, 23.3. Playing in high A is a little too old for me. Three home runs over the last 15. Cameron Colley, Texas Rangers prospect, shortstop slash second base, hit four home runs, and it could have made an argument to get him in the top 15 as well, especially after having 10 RBIs. He's a very cheap non-first auto out of 2022 Bowman Chrome. He does have a first Chrome in 2021 draft. He's a lot like Brady House. Uh, how his card system, his card schematic works, a first chrome in draft and then a, uh, a non-first uh, chrome auto in, in the next release. So he's having the best season of his career. He's got a 251 batting average, 13 home runs and 20 stolen bases. So definitely a cheap guy to look at there. But uh, because his, 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 I guess it's not a first auto, even though it is his first auto, he doesn't have the first emblem. So that does kind of affect his prices uh, on his autos. Nick Morabito. Is hitting 312 with 47 stolen bases. We've got the uh, the hit tool, speed tool guy here with no juice. Um, but like I said, he does have a lot of a lot of contact skills and a lot of speed on the base pass. It could be impact speed at the major league level. But how he fits into an offensive lineup with that profile is always tricky with those type of guys that don't hit for any power. Wes Kath has a first Chrome only in 2021 draft. Uh, his cards are his cards are very hard to find. But it's really not that big of a deal because he's an absolute K machine. And um, I would definitely try to get those cards on eBay the second he has uh, any success at any level for sure. Aiden Miller, 20.2 Phillies. He's a high profile guy out of 2024. Bowman struggling a little bit. He's hit 227 with 19 Ks over the last 15 days. He's been struggling since being promoted to high A. 
In the Midwest League, we've got Luke Adams, who's been trending up significantly. I've been tracking his card prices for the last two months because he was a guy that was definitely of interest for me when I saw him kind of skyrocketing up my juggernaut rankings. He's a top 10 player on the juggernaut rankings, and uh, he's got some very easy power. Just not sure where he's going to fit defensively out of 2024. Bowman's cards are right around the 10 to $15 mark, so they have jumped from the $5 mark on release. Angel Gano. His performance has not slacked since his promotion to high A. He's hitting 333 with 10 home runs and 20 stolen bases between low A and high A. Definitely got to watch out of 2023 Bowman. Max Clark is coming on strong in the back half. His Ks have increased since his promotion, but he's still producing, which is very good news. He's got lots of tools. Like I said, he's been very hot in the second half. He's an expensive auto, still $175 auto probably because of a lot of the hype that went along with him pre-draft. But he's finally starting to figure it out and click and doing pretty well in a high A. Chase Davis was promoted to high A, but he struggled in single A, which is kind of weird. Sometimes you see prospects that are struggling at a certain level and they'll promote him anyway. And you know they'll have a little bit of success. He's got some fringy swing and miss tendencies and also some fringy ground ball to fly ball rate. So not really sure if he's a guy that could be a sleeper, but uh, definitely a guy to keep an eye on. He's still pretty expensive um, to be a sleeper at $35 because he was, like I said, a high-profile draftee coming out of that 2023 class. Ethan O'Donnell, this looks like a hot streak all the way. He's got a 103 WRC plus on the year and uh, a 100 WRC plus is considered average. So an average player at 22.3 still in high A. So uh, like I said, looks like a hot streak all the way for him. Josue DePaula, 19.1. He is struggling a little bit. Uh, he did great in low A. Um, all the underlining data in high A is great. He just hasn't had a lot of production. There's no scary K numbers. There's no swing, scary swing strike percentages. Um, there's no scary ground ball to fly ball rates. He's just not producing. He's not making great contact right now. But this is also a very high ceiling bat to watch. The Northwest League wrapping up high A is Christian Serta. He actually performed better in high A last year than he's performing this year. He's got below average contact and power, so not much to talk about there with Christian Serta. Peyton Williams has solid numbers in high A, but he's nearly 24 and has no double A experience. So he's going to have to accelerate his uh his production and uh, his development before he turns 24 and 25 years old and he becomes absolutely obsolete in the hobby. Bryce Eldridge has a 305 batting average with a 152 ISO since his promotion to high A. Now, uh, he doesn't have the swing and miss tendencies that um, Spencer Jones has, but there are some kind of fringy K rates there, but he's still very young, 19.8 playing in high A, had two homers, four doubles and uh, 12 RBIs, $70 auto out of 2023 draft. Sabine Sabalas is way hit over power, but he does play plus defense at third base, which could get him in a lineup. I'm not necessarily sure if it's going to be with a powerhouse team, but with a smaller organization that, does, that doesn't uh, perform very well at the major level, he could be an everyday player just based on his defense. Maybe kind of like a Cabrian Hayes look, uh, but that's that's kind of, that could be... A uh, very high ceiling for him. Bryant Betancourt, uh, Colorado Rockies catcher slash first baseman, hit four homers and hit 318. He's having the best season of his career. He's a 256 hitter with 12 homers, but uh, 20.8, so just uh, kind of flirting with that old for high age. Tommy Troy continues to struggle with injuries and performance since the draft. I've thought about maybe grabbing a couple of Tommy Troy cards in hopes that he would figure it out the major league or the, the, the minor league level, but he just hasn't been able to put anything together since being drafted. Uh, just kind of struggles throughout his career. So he's a $15 auto out of 2023 draft for another high profile guy that was a first rounder in his class. In the low A Carolina League, we've got Yohandi Morales, who was rehabbing a thumb injury in low A and had a lot of success in those few plate appearances, hit two home runs, two doubles, seven RBIs. He has been struggling a bit in double A this year. He's hitting 238 with some fringy K numbers. Daniel Galarte has speed, but struggling in his second consecutive year in low A, which is never a good sign for young prospects. We've got Carlos Coleman Harris at number three, who I'm very used to seeing on the ice cold list, but... Uh, he had a nice last 15 days, hit 409 with a double and eight RBIs. Another one of those guys that you have to be careful with uh, coming out of Chrome release, who's a high-profile 
um, high hype guy and just does not pan out in the minor leagues. Chandler Pollard, he's got plus speed, but the offensive profile is pretty rough for him. 20.2 in low A as well. And Elijah Green has a high risk bat with insurmountable swing and miss issues. He was another high profile guy coming out of that draft class, and he's pretty much just swung and missed himself into uh, oblivion in the hobby. A lot of guys trying to sell Elijah Green right now, um, just trying to unload what they've got of him and probably trying to recoup the funds that they spent on release on a high profile hype guy that I think was a top 10 uh, draft pick in that draft class. Braylon Tavera, I thought this guy could be a sleeper after the 2022 season, but his 2023 has been quite bad. He had 15 Ks over the last 15 days. Not much action in the Florida State League uh, in low A. We've got Esmerlin Valdez, 17 home runs on the season, but there's some bad underlying K data for a 20-year-old in low A, which is definitely never a good sign because it's uh, kind of an indicator of how much power he may or may not get to in the upper minors uh, with bad swing and miss tendencies. Brandon Winokur is another high ceiling bat with bad underlying K data. He's a huge kid with a huge power ceiling. But again, we're looking at two guys here with a very high risk hit tool and some ugly underlying K numbers. Byron Chirillo, another international player that can't really figure it out in low A. He's out of 2024 Bowman for a five bucks. And wrapping up our honorable mentions in the low A California League, like I said, the DSL only had one player in the complex league is over. So this is going to wrap up our honorable mentions. We've got Demetrio Crisantis, and he is becoming very hot in the hobby. I see a lot of people looking for him and selling him right now. 19.9 second base prospect with the Arizona Diamondbacks. He's got an exceptional hit tool with excellent K numbers. And he's one of those guys who I think power will determine his ceiling and his value in the hobby over the next few years. Milgar Perez is playing well, but it's his fourth consecutive season in low A. And he's almost 23 years old. So he was a guy that uh, probably four or five years, or probably two or three years ago, people were kind of chasing out 2021 Chrome release. The 2021 Bowman Chrome release was an absolute slaughter. Uh, None of those prospects really turned out. I think Christopher Morel was actually the highlight of that release. So uh, a lot of high-profile guys out of that release just bombed um, throughout their minor league career. Perez is one of them, like I said, fourth consecutive season in low A. I'm not really sure why he hasn't been released yet. Wilman Diaz, uh, another guy out of 2021 Chrome that's got catastrophic swing and miss. He just happens to get hot every once in a while and find himself on a hot sheet. Kendall George has an exceptional contact skill uh, and tons of speed, but another player with no juice. And like I said, it's kind of hard to see how they fit in a game that's pretty much based on home runs and power output now. Robert Calais, he got promoted to low A after the complex league ended, like I said, with uh, Welbin Francisca, two guys that are definitely uh, two, of the, two of the players that, uh, that panned out having great DSL stats. You know, they played well in the comp- exceptionally well in the complex league this year, and they both got promotions to uh, low A following the complex league. So definitely a guy to check out. Robert Calais has some huge high ceiling tools, but he's in the Colorado Rockies organization, which uh, does hurt his value and will definitely hurt his development because they're not very good at developing young hitters. And when they get to double A, there's a significant uh, there's a significant switch on statistics for hitters. I mentioned that uh, earlier in the video when a double A player, when uh, Colorado Rockies prospects get to Hartford. Rossman Verdugo was recently promoted to high A, but uh, a lot of swing and miss issues with him as well. All right, that's going to lead us to our top five, what everyone has probably been waiting for, who are the best players over the last 15 days. We're going to lead it off with Eric Batanti. Uh, this was a kid that I've definitely been keeping my eye on throughout the course of the 2024 season. He's 18.7 playing between the complex league and low A. He was really recently promoted to low A. He's got a very good hit power bat, but some elevated K percentages and swing strike percentage. I think those were the things that kind of kept me off Batanti at the moment but like i said he's not even 19 yet and the uh, swing and miss has yet to affect his production he's got the highest batting average and highest iso on this list and his cards are starting to jump up pretty quickly uh, when i was actually first looking at his stuff he was about a 15 dollars auto and that was only a few months ago so now he's up to a 35 dollars auto out of 2023 bowman draft so these are all uh, the two through five are going to all be let's talk wax ranks of 2.5 and um, that's a pretty pretty solid rank. Um, 
I do not dish out the elite rank, the one rank or the 1.5 rank very often. So uh, 2.5 is still a really good rank. These are players that could have very successful major league careers. Um, so don't think a 2.5 is bad. I'm just very stingy on my upper uh, upper level ranks. Colby Thomas, he is an absolute firework so far in 2024. The unfortunate thing is he's a little bit old and he's stuck in the Oakland A's organization. Had five home runs, seven doubles, and 12 RBIs. Uh, just having an amazing season. The most home runs on this list of 24 and 14 stolen bases. Uh, 296 batting average, two, or 293 batting average, 296 ISO. So just an amazing season for Colby Thomas. It's really cool to see these guys kind of come out of nowhere. But he's been doing really well throughout his career in the major leagues, but just to blow up and have crazy seasons like this, uh, Colby Thomas is definitely having one of those. He's a speed power, speed power hit combo, but he's playing a lot of left field. It really won't matter um, where he plays defensively in Oakland because, like I said, if you hit, they're going to find a place for you. He could be a guy that uh, sees a call up by the end of the 2024 season. Definitely a guy to take a look at, but he is 23.5. Michael Arroyo uh, struggled in, uh, struggled a bit uh, following promotion to low A in 2023. His numbers kind of dipped and he kind of became like a just a, an everyday average prospect. Nobody was really worried about Michael Arroyo. He was kind of um, big coming out of that 2023 Bowman release, but um, he is picking back up. He's had a great 2024 and he's white hot right now. Four home runs, four doubles and 11 RBIs. He's got a 228 ISO on the season, 19.7 between low A and high A. He's number 28 on the juggernaut ranking system, which is really good, and he's a $20 auto out of 2023 Bowman. At number two and number one, we had two guys that had just immaculate uh, past two weeks. It was really hard to determine who was going to get the number one spot and who was going to get the number two spot. Either of these guys could have easily taken the number one spot. Uh, uh, Dalton Rushing, 23.4, has really come on in the back half of the year. He's a first base slash catcher slash outfielder. He has been getting reps in left field, which is something uh, when he started to get hot with his bat, I was like, where are they going to put Rushing you know, with the, with the players that uh, the Dodgers have at their major league level. And I said, you know, they could stick him in left field, and lo and behold, he starts to get some reps in left field. So that's very huge if you're sitting on rushing. That could definitely mean that they want to get his bat to the major league level. He's got 17 home runs so far between double A AA and triple A, hit six of them over the last 15 days. And uh, just a really exciting power bat there to look at. Our 2022 draft, his cards are right around $55. He does not have any uh, numbered cards outside of a black and white Ray Wave uh, autograph. So he's got base autos and he's got black and white Ray Wave autos. And those are the only autos you're going to find for Dalton Rushing. Um, much like Romero, Romero's stuff is SP'd as heck too. It's really hard to find. So at number one and two, you've got two guys who have cards that are very hard to find. And that's always also another factor to think about in the hobby because if they're in very short supply, that means when they get hot, they could be in very high demand. So at number one, we've got Mikey Romero. He's had pretty much an injury riddled career. He had a rough 2023 season probably due to injuries and just not being able to get comfortable and get in the zone. He's playing very well in high A so far, but he's currently back on the seven day injured list. So something to always think about with guys uh, that you're collecting. Uh, are they injury prone? Are they Zach Veen-esque? Uh, are they Royce Lewis-esque prospects who are going to take a few extra years to develop because they're having a uh, kind of, you know, the injury bug follows them around their career. So he hit five home runs, three doubles, and 17 RBIs before landing on the IL in high A. He's got a 289 batting average, 243 ISO. The only red flag here, it's not even really a red flag, it's just kind of a uh, K to walk ratio of 3.91, but 10 homers and one stolen base. He's worked up to 133 on the juggernaut rankings. Uh, he's a Let's Talk Wax rank of three out of 2022 draft for 60 bucks. His uh, base autos are redemptions, and his other autos are just very hard to find. I think he only has a few parallels, I think, like gold, uh, blue. You guys can tell me in the comments if you're people who've chased Romero. But uh, like I said, with these like rushing, he's very uh, SP'd in his cards. Now, as I mentioned before, if you guys enjoyed this content and you want to help support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Lots of other data and exclusive content over there to help you guys on your collecting journey. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Huge shout out to all my level three Patreon sponsors. You guys rock. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and like because I do this content throughout the year. I appreciate all the views and y'all have a great day.